What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel, and we have one week left in the regular season of the 2023-2024 college football year. Week 13 is coming upon us. Rivalry week, a chance for teams to make their final statement to solidify their spot in conference championship game and make another statement towards the college football playoff committee, especially for the top-tier contenders. But this video is not just about the top-tier contenders. This video is about what I believe to be my personal top 25. Now, again, there are a lot of teams that could slide in and out of the top 25, and I think the top contenders at this point are pretty clear. However, beyond that, it can be a little tricky, especially as you get more towards the bottom to put together a top 25 this year. But again, this is my personal top 25. You don't have to agree with it. It's just my personal opinion, like my opinion means anything. But if you're interested, hey, welcome to th this video. I uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. At watching these videos is a huge way to help support the channel, and I appreciate all the support I can get. But there are more ways to help do it. If you're willing and able, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. That's the biggest way to help support me. Again, watching this video, another big way. You can like, comment, share, and do anything else you, you can think of to help support the channel. Whatever you guys are able to do means a lot to me. So let's break into my top 25 Oh, wait, but before we do that, you guys know I got to go through the honorable mention list. So, a couple teams out of the ACC here on this board. You got the NC State Wolfpack, very, very close to breaking into that top 25. You have the, the Clemson Tigers, who are back in the conversation now after their win over the North Carolina Tar Heels, who fell out of my poll uh, from th this past week. The Kansas Jayhawks still sit here as a team that I still really like. They've been battling with a lot of quarterback injuries. I still think that's a team that can break back into my top 25 if enough teams above them fall. UCLA is back on the board after a very sloppy win over the U USC Trojans, but they got the win. They're close to breaking into the top 25. Tennessee fell out of my poll from this past week after their loss to the Georgia Bulldogs. Didn't fault them too much for that. That Georgia Bulldogs lost. In fact, that probably is team number 26 for me right there. And then you got a couple teams out of the group of five realm. UNLV has skyrocketed to be the best team in the Mountain West, now surpassing Fresno State and even Air Force as they beat Air Force this past week. Miami of Ohio is a team out of the Mid-American Conference that sits here. Now, you don't see another team out of the Mid-American Conference that deserves to be in. Spoiler alert, they are in it. And then the SMU Mustangs here as well after their win over the Memphis Tigers. But, hey, those are the teams that didn't make it. So, who did? We'll slide on in now to my top 25. I got three group of five teams here at number 25 through number 23, and we have to talk about the James Madison Dukes. I felt like it was still worthy that they were to be ranked. Oh, what a heartbreaker against the App State Mountaineers. I mean, just absolute broken hearted loss there in overtime. College game day was in Harrisonburg. And there were people on the show all day long that were saying like, well, this is where upsets can happen. Uh, I believe they picked James Madison across the board, if I'm not mistaken, although I could be wrong on that. However, James Madison lost to the Appalachian State Mountaineers, their first loss of the season. Uh, and uh, again, with all the emotions running through that program, the NCAA denying them their waiver to go to uh, the Sun Belt Championship game. Uh, and even a, a postseason bowl if there are enough bowl uh, eligible teams that will already fill spots. I mean, heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking for the James Madison Dukes. However, I still uh, still feel like they deserve to be ranked here at number 25. Number 24 is Toledo. The Rockets are in the top 25 poll. I'm loving the way that this Toledo team is playing. Daquan Finn is an absolute stud at quarterback. They have a ton of very, very talented weapons. They're already in the Mid-American Conference Championship game. I like them to win the Mid-American Conference Championship game. And who knows, if they get ranked by the committee, maybe if there's some chaos that happens, they can challenge Tulane for that group of, of five spot. But again, we'll have to see what the committee says uh, here coming up on Tuesday, but Toledo playing some good football there in my top 25. Liberty, now that James Madison has lost, only six undefeated teams remain. Liberty is one of those, and it's about time they get into the top 25 poll. It's really hard to go undefeated in college football, no matter who you are. Do you have a road game, I believe, against UTEP coming up th this week, so don't count the Miners out too much, uh, but Liberty definitely going to be the heavy favorites there in that game and hoping to finish off the regular season unbeaten, and they're already in the Conference USA title game there as well. Utah is here at number 22. They dropped six spots from last week. Now, I really, really like Utah still as a team, and even without Cam Rising, the offense has definitely been able to find its moments, but you just got absolutely plastered by the Arizona Wildcats. Now, give credit to the Wildcats. That is a 
fantastic team. They really took it to this Utah defense. I did not think this Arizona offense was going to have as much success as it did against a very, very physical Utah U defense. Uh, and look, this is a Utah defense that's still physical. They still play r really, really well, but Arizona is legit. That, that is what that game proved to me right there. There were some teams that jumped over Utah, so I ended up dropping them here to number 22. I am keeping them ranked in my top 25. Poll, Oklahoma State is sitting right here at number 21. They've jumped up four spots. They were sitting at 25 this past week and with a couple teams dropping below them they did end up jumping up now it was a very very tricky back and forth game there in fact they were down uh 14 to 3 uh there against the Houston Cougars I believe they were losing at halftime as well Houston put up a really good fight with this team but Oklahoma State able to come back in the second half they pull away believe Ollie Gordon ended up having three touchdowns in that game he is back running uh like what he was earlier this season again he's kind of fallen off over the past couple of weeks but started to get back to what he was doing really really well and right now Oklahoma State is sitting for that spot in the Big 12 title game we'll see if they can close it out we'll see if they can officially win that spot here uh with a win uh next week not entirely sure who they play although i'm going to fact check that right now again there's a lot of chaos scenarios that can happen in the big 12 conference this week uh, and oklahoma state is going to be going up against byu they get that game at home in boone Pickens stadium so we'll see what happens with the oklahoma state cowboys but i'm very excited uh to see what they have in store for us in the final week see if they can clinch a spot in the big 12 title game let's go ahead and move forward here into my top 20 where the iowa hawkeyes have jumped up three spots iowa with the win over the illinois fighting illini this past week again was not pretty uh, had a uh, jump through some hoops to be able to get it done but they end up getting the 15 to 13 win and the iowa hawkeyes clinch a spot uh, the, the, they clinch the Big Ten West title, and they will be going to Indianapolis to represent the Big Ten West in the Big Ten championship game. Now, uh, again, it is still a mystery on who they will play, but they are going to know after this week. It's going to be the winner of the game, and we'll preview that matchup a little bit here. It's by far the biggest game of the week and probably the biggest game of the college football season. But for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Iowa is is playing really, really well offensively. Sure, they still aren't really finding that groove. However, defensively, this is a really, really good defensive team. They can shut you down. They can uh, really let – they just force you to play their style of game, which is a grinded out defensive – uh, just slug fest uh, and that's what i was going to look to do in the final game against nebraska a game that they could potentially lose and that nebraska needs to win for bowl eligibility uh and uh in the big 10 championship game as well you're especially gonna have to do that there notre dame jumps up one spot here to number 19 uh they were able to get the win over wake forest this past week and now you have stanford coming up this week so a chance to get uh, a nine win season here not a bad year if you are marcus freeman maybe a little bit under at expectations but with all the big games behind you and with probably not a huge likelihood that you are going to get in uh to a the group uh, to a new year six bowl, bowl game again unless absolute chaos ensues but even if that happens i still don't think notre dame will get in to a new year six bowl game uh but you do have one final shot to go out put a statement here uh wrap the season up with nine wins possibly get your 10th one there in the bowl season sam hartman really took it to his former team th th this past week uh and notre dame they're jumping up one spot to number 19 kansas state is jumping up one spot here to number 18 uh, I, it was not a pretty performance against kansas at all uh, and uh, ballard of the kansas jayhawks ended up playing really really well however kansas state was able to persevere they were able to create some big plays they came back to win uh the the, the showdown in the sunflower state and kansas state uh remains in the big 12 title game picture now uh, for Kansas State coming up this week, you do have Iowa State at home. Now, you're going to need Oklahoma State to lose, uh, and I believe you're going to need Oklahoma to lose there as well. Uh, however, you may not need that latter thing to happen. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, familiarize myself with the Big 12 clinching scenarios a little bit more here as the week goes along. But for the Kansas State Wildcats, still in the Big 12 title game race, uh, you got to be able to beat the Iowa State Cyclones and hope some other teams fall to be able to get in to that Big 12 title game. Tulane has not moved 
improved since the past week. Uh, they did get the win uh, in th their, their last game, which sets up a chance to uh, probably host the American Athletic Championship game when they face the UTSA uh, Roadrunners as they also remain unbeaten in conference. But Tulane, again, by far and away, especially now with the loss to James Madison, are the group of five uh, are the front runners to get into a New Year's Six Bowl game from the group of five. I love the way that Michael Pratt is playing. Yes, you missed Taji Spears this year, but you've had some solid options that have really picked it up. This is a defense that uh, has really started to play well. And look, uh, albeit Tulane has had their fair share of struggles this season. The they have. They have really struggled to get by some teams that they should have ran through, that they should have dominated in the past couple of weeks. But you were able to run through Florida Atlantic. You led 24-0 after three. Florida Atlantic tried to come back. But the two-lane green wave uh, ended up finally starting to get back to their usual self. Again, sets up a winner-take-all there uh, for a chance to host the American Athletic Championship game against the UTSA Roadrunners. Arizona, the Wildcats are sitting here at number 16. And uh, yes, you could put Arizona in the top 15. Would not argue with you one bit because this Wildcat team is legit. They struggled er er early on, especially with a couple of teams that arguably now with the way they're playing, they could beat. But five straight wins for the Wildcats. They are sitting at eight and three. Uh, and this is an absolutely phenomenal team. Now, I don't believe that they can make the Pac-12 title game. Uh, there may be some things that can happen in order for them to, to do so. Uh, but the Arizona uh, right now is a team that I'm looking at that, look, you're probably going to be Arizona State this past week there or this next week. They are one of the surprise teams. In college football this year, Noah Fafita is playing really well at the quarterback position. This is an Arizona team that took it to a very physical Utah defense this past week. And the Wildcats are playing absolutely phenomenal football right now. I got them just outside my top 15 at number 16. Let's take a look here at what my top 15 actually is. I have not moved Oklahoma or LSU uh, from their spots. Uh, from this past week, Oklahoma was able to get by BYU. Definitely had some struggles there. Uh, and then the, the LSU Tigers beat uh, a the, the Georgia State team that you were absolutely supposed to di uh, that you were absolutely supposed to dominate. And how about eight touchdowns for Jaden Daniels? I mean, my goodness, his Heisman case is being well known. Well known. He's going to compete with Michael Penix, Bo Nix, and most likely Marvin Harrison Jr. Those might be the four people that we see in New York. Uh, as the Heisman front runners, but either way, Oklahoma right now is still alive in the Big 12 title game picture. You are going to need Oklahoma State to lose because you do because you have lost the tiebreaker to Bedlam, uh, and it probably would help if you had Kansas State lose as well. So with the Oklahoma Sooners, still a path for you to get into your conference title game. LSU, not so much. However, a chance to close out your season with nine wins uh, and win uh, that game against Texas A&M coming up here this last week. So uh, still two really good teams sitting down there at 15 and 14. Again, I have LSU above Oklahoma. Who would I favor on a neutral field? I believe that would be LSU with the way that Oklahoma ha has been playing. Uh, but those two teams do not move in my poll. We're going to talk about the Oregon State Beavers next. Man, they were so close. They were this close to being able to pull off that to be able to pull off that upset win against the Washington Huskies. They had their chances to do it, but the Washington defense did what the Washington defense has done all season long, and that was gut out wins. That was uh, just a phenomenal performance. Uh, this was an Oregon State team that gave it their all. They had every shot they needed to be able to win that game, but the Washington defense stepped up when it needed to, made the big plays, uh, and ended up having Oregon State lose that game. Now, I did drop them three spots to 13, mainly because I do think Penn State and, and, and Ole Miss, A, would be favored on a neutral field against them, and I'd pick them to, to win that game uh, as well. So for the Penn State Nittany Lions, they jump up one spot after beating Rutgers, and for Ole Miss, uh, they jump up one spot after being University of Louisiana Monroe. Again, that is only credit because Oregon State has now fallen below them there at number 13. So uh, really, when you, really, when you take a look down to it, still like the way that Oregon State is playing, you're not going to get into the Pac-12 title game. You, pro you are not that chaos team that some people were really hoping for. However, this is still a very good football team. They have been very, very impressive so far th th this season, uh, and they're sitting right here still within the top 15. Again, I've already talked about Penn State. You went and you dominated the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Likely can finish out with 10 wins if you're able to beat the Michigan State Spartans. And then Ole Miss, you have a date with Mississippi State 
on Turkey Day uh, coming up here on Thanksgiving. So uh, we'll see how that one plays out for them. A chance for them to finish with a 10-win season. Uh, again, another 10-win season under Lane Kiffin. But let's go ahead and move on now into my top 10. And there are some changes, my friends, to the top 10. Missouri has dropped one spot here to number 10. They had a lot of trouble with the Florida Gators. Now, do I fault them for having trouble with Florida? No, not at all. That's not why Missouri dropped one spot. In fact, I still think Missouri is a really, really good team. You are likely going to now finish with 10, with 10 wins if you're able to get past the Arkansas Razorbacks, that's an Arkansas team that just hasn't really looked super motivated to do anything really all season long, uh, and they aren't even in contention to get into the postseason half. However, still expect Arkansas to bring their best, but Brady Cook to Luther Burden, man, what a combination that is. Harrison Mevis does it again for Missouri, hits another game-winning field goal, but they do drop one spot because it seems like every single week I'm starting to get more impressed with the Louisville Cardinals. Now, yes, they're getting out to those slow starts. Uh, yes, they, fought, they find themselves down behind the eight ball early and Miami ended up having a one point lead at, at halftime ended up stretching that lead Louisville had to make some sort of effort to come back but the Louisville Cardinals man they did it uh, they came back 38 to 31 been very impressed with the way that Jeff Brom's group has played so far this season now that pit loss is going to hurt them. Yes, it is hurting them right now in their chances to make the college football playoff. If you were to be able to beat Pitt and you're sitting 11-0 right now, you may even be above the Florida State Seminoles in my rankings. But that bad loss to Pitt, a Pitt team that is not going to make the postseason, just a very, very unfortunate loss there for them in which they just did not look good at at all uh the louisville still a shot for them to get in the college football playoff they are going to need alabama to lose in the sc championship game they are going to need texas to lose and obviously uh all of this is mute if they can't get past florida state in the acc championship game because ohio state michigan is going to sort it itself out uh, and then washington and oregon likely will sort itself out there as well but uh speaking of hey some of the teams i mentioned earlier alabama still sitting here at number eight they've been in this position for quite some time can't really move them or fault them there uh, for the uh, the win over the Chattanooga Mocs. That's a team out of the a a FCS ranks. You were supposed to dominate it. You did. Ninth straight win for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Likely we'll get another one here against the Auburn Tigers. Although, again, rivalry week with the Iron Bowl. Don't count uh, Auburn out. Uh, but Alabama going to be well favored to win to win that game uh, and and all eyes right now are on that SEC championship game against the Georgia Bulldogs and then the Texas Longhorns you see sitting right here at number seven Texas is a team that look you lost Jonathan Brooks however there's still a really good shot for you to get into the college football playoff this is a team with Texas that when you look top to bottom very talented roster Quinn Ewers is back a lot of weapons there you are in the Big 12 championship game you cannot afford a slip up this upcoming week it just can't happen uh, and then whoever you may play uh, in the Big 12 championship game you actually end up playing texas tech this week texas tech uh, ended up rallying uh, in to make the postseason uh, and just a chance for texas tech to go on the road uh, in uh, austin uh, and be able to spoil the college football playoff hopes of the longhorns that's what the red raiders are going to hope to accomplish obviously if you're texas you can't have that happen still a player to get into the college football playoff i have dropped florida state one spot here to number six and for me it is that they have continuously gotten out to these slow starts they did it this past week against north alabama of all teams uh, an fcs team and not a very good one at that uh did not even get announced to get in uh to the uh fcs tournament i do believe the FCS playoffs but uh, again for me it's Florida State consistently getting out to these slow starts yeah North Alabama was three and eight on the year not a good look for Florida State now you in that game however when when you really sit down and take a look here Florida State just took a huge hit this past week when Jordan Travis went down Jordan Travis going down with injury uh, was absolutely devastating. It was devastating. Now, Tate R R Rodemaker was able to manage that game, and look, you should have been able to against the team of the caliber of North Alabama. However, moving forward, you have Florida in the swamp. That is a 
huge trap game, and the Gators have nothing to lose. Uh, they're looking to spoil the season. And then you have a date with Louisville in the ACC championship game, which, uh, again, both of those teams have gotten out to some slow starts. So we'll see how that game ends up shaping out for the, those teams. But for Florida State, for uh, – I did drop them one spot because of how a team ahead of them or that I jumped ahead of them is playing, uh, but also losing Jordan Travis definitely is a factor for them dropping that one spot. But Oregon did jump up here to number five. I've liked the way that the Ducks are playing for quite some time now. That is a legitimate national title contending team. The Oregon Ducks and Bo Nix are playing phenomenally well. Bo Nix, probably uh, someone that is going to be in New York as a Heisman uh, candidate. And as long as Oregon takes care of business against Oregon State this uh, uh, upcoming week, and even if they don't, I still think they're going to get into the Pac-12 championship game. But just to make sure, you got to be able to beat Oregon State in Eugene this uh, upcoming week. They just gave a fight to the Washington Huskies, but Oregon, they're at number five. They end up jumping the Florida State Seminoles. Now, the Washington Huskies are up here at number four. Michael Penix is also playing really well. Now, this is a Washington team that has given their fans some heart attacks over the past couple of weeks, especially with the way that that Husky defense has been playing, especially early on, uh, and then moving forward there uh, as well. Their defense is just finding ways to grind out wins. Uh, and look, this is the defense that doesn't get off to the greatest start there. Uh, the, the Oregon State Beavers actually ended up making a great comeback effort, and the Beavers, I've talked about this before, had their chances to win that game. However, Washington was able to persevere. Michael Penix was great in the first half. He was even great in the second half, even though Washington was not able to score at any points off of anything that Penix was able to do. you got to give a lot of credit to the Oregon State Beavers, but give a lot of credit to Washington as well as they still sit undefeated on the year. They're in the Pac-12 title game, uh, and as long as you get by the Washington State Cougars this next week in the Apple Cup, Got a pretty good shot there. All right, we're going to skip these next two teams and go to number one because it's very, very quick. Georgia's the undisputed number one team in the nation, period. Every other team right now, in my opinion, is below the level that Georgia is playing at. Not necessarily talent-wise. I think there are a lot of other talented teams, but Georgia, I think, is playing the best football out of anybody right now. They look dynamic offensively. The defense is really starting to show back up. You just went and you dominated Ole Miss, who was a top-10 team. You dominated Tennessee, who was a top-20 team. Uh, when when they played them. The resume has really started to build here for Georgia. You also have a win over Missouri, who the committee views as a top 10 team there. This is just a, this is a Georgia team that is playing absolutely phenomenally. They're playing really, really well. Uh, and, and to me, they deserve ultimate respect uh, at that number one spot. That is where Georgia uh, will stay for the time being. Now, Let's get to the two teams that everyone is excited about. Don't get too frustrated there if, you know, Michigan has slid down to three and Ohio State is up there at number two. The top three here is what the committee is going to have. So at this point now, I agree with the committee. I've had Michigan above Ohio State for a very long time, but now it feels like this, the, the, the tables are starting to flip, and maybe it's because Harbaugh's not on the sideline, although that's not what I'm going to call it. I'm going to look at it and take it what it is for face value. I just think right now Ohio State looks like a little bit more of a complete team. Michigan struggled with Maryland. Yes, Maryland is a fairly dangerous team. They gave Ohio State fits there as well, but Michigan has really just to me, not played their best football as of late. I don't think they played their best in the game against Penn State, even though they did win. And I don't—I definitely don't think they played their best in that game against Maryland. Ohio State offensively are clicking on all cylinders, and the defense, even though it is not healthy, is performing at a very, very high level, and it expects to be healthy for this game against the Michigan Wolverines. But between those two teams, no matter where you have them ranked, everything is going to sort itself out because everything is on the line in Ann Arbor this week. Everything, absolutely everything is on the line. Uh, a chance to go to the college football playoff, the Big Ten title game, uh, and uh, national championship hopes are on the line. It's as big as it gets. Going to be number two versus number three, no matter what order the two teams are going to fall in there. 11-0 and 11-0 for the second straight year. Loser, unless there's chaos, likely out of the race for the college football playoff. That's going to be a phenomenal, exciting game. I'm going to preview that one either later on today or tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if I end up having time to do it today. I'd love to do it today, but we'll see again uh, if my schedule uh, allows for it. But hey, that's going to do it for this video, guys. This is going to be a very, very fun rivalry week, championship week. Uh, I'll have one final poll out after this week 
of games. Uh, and then we will go ahead and dive on into conference championship prediction. So, uh, hey, th th thank you guys uh, for... Uh, Thank you guys for the support on the channel. We've got one week left in the regular season for college football, and it's going to be a fun one. Hey, remember to play hard but tailgate harder, and I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.